also welcome to the school board's second budget workshop for the 2011-2012 budget season. Um, I think to, we have a list of topics to cover tonight, um, and I'll read them off and then turn it over to Ken to provide an overview of sort of where we stand. Um, tonight, our list includes community services, benefits, instructional support, staff and student support, transportation, custodial and facilities, and athletic department. Well, thank you, John. Um, as school board members know, but I'll just repeat it for the benefit of our uh, public who may be watching, the school board is considering a uh, budget that would increase expenditures by 2.2%. Uh, which equates to a 1.9% rate on taxes, which for a median price house in Cape Elizabeth uh, would equate to an $85 increase uh, in property taxes. So we think it's a um, conservative budget um, that reflects the economic climate that surrounds us, uh, yet we also think it's a budget that maintains what's a top-notch school system. Um, the school board tonight is going to be considering the seven different budget lines that John mentioned. And of those lines, community services <coughs> is asking for the same um, sort of funding they had last year. In other words, the budget that Janet has developed will have no impact on property taxes. The benefit line is up about 7.5%, and that's mainly due to health insurance costs, which we're estimating, we don't know right now, but we're estimating that uh, our costs will go up about 10%. Instructional support, um, we'll answer any questions that you have. If you compare the apples to apples, um, that account is up around $47,000 because of an out-of-district tuition that we were not anticipating um, that we actually incurred this year. Staff and student support is uh, at the same amount of funding as last year. Transportation is up a little bit, but that's because of the fuel account. Uh, everyone's aware of what's going on with the price of oil. Custodial and facilities is, is up um, almost $100,000. Uh, Greg will review those accounts, but that's mostly due to the new boiler that we have and, of course, the increase in the price of fuel, which is driving a lot of us. And we can talk about that in depth tonight um, and tell you when we put this budget together, with, you know, we were thinking around $3 <coughs> and, uh, you know, we may want to increase that line before we bring it to the town council. Uh, and the other last account that the school board is going to consider tonight, Jeff will review with you, and that's the athletic account. That's just almost all those lines are in flat funding, except for we're recommending um, increased time for the trainer. So that's kind of like an overview of what we wanted to hear tonight. Any questions of me before we turn it over to Janet for? Well, I was going to ask, will we put will we put Janet on the spot for a? Summary presentation. We we have already heard a, a presentation from each of the department heads. Um, is, that, is that I don't know what what should we be putting department heads on the spot tonight for a summary presentation, or should we just go right into questions? Whatever um, will help you develop clarity about this budget. I think that's what we're after. Okay. We well, make I, sure I, you're I, as clear as possible. I think the members of the school board have seen that presentation, so, and I don't think we asked for that in advance, so I think we can just go right into questioning. Okay. Okay. Um, so, on that note, are there any questions about the community services project? Um, you mentioned um, the expansion of the summer day camp to include divisions for grades 7 and 8. Can you expand on that just a little bit? I'd be glad to. Um, last year you may know that we um, 
removed the middle school day camp, um, believing that that was what the community, the students really were looking for. Um, and we moved everything into what we call TNT or trips and treks. Um, as a result of those not going as well as we had hoped, um, we're keeping those, but we're also bringing back the middle school day camp concept. We're changing it to called, <coughs> called Teen Scene. Um, and it's, it's going to have more um, structure than the previous middle school day camp, but less structure than the current day camp for grades one through five. Um, they will have access to all of the same equipment that the day camp has, so the archery, the pool, the track, the, the turf field, all of those things will still be accessible to them, the game room, um, but we will intermingle the two um, groups into various activities at a time. So um, we're excited that it's, it will better meet the need um, and keeping with the trips and tracks. So we'll still have all of that as well. Thanks. I have a couple quick questions for you. Perhaps um, I didn't read this quite properly. But as a whole, community services cost the town about $35 for for home, for the medium home, is that correct? Correct. I mean, some people have the mistaken impression that community services is a break-even proposition, but it isn't. Never was intended to be. Um, part of that is based on um, funding pieces from the state, um, but um, it's always been as close to break-even as possible. And that 35 bucks is not increase, that's, that's actually the total amount each house pays. Correct. Okay. I, I noticed that the, um, Fitness Center um, has, a, has the largest shortfall of about 14 grand. Um, has that continually been a, uh, a shortfall for us? It has for the last few years, which is um, part of the reason why, um, if you remember two, three years ago now, the town um, oversaw both the pool and the fitness center. Three years ago, they um, decided to go um, and and um, go into private to, to rent it out rather than to have it be operated by the town. Um, that fell through at the last minute. And so um, rather than close it down, community services felt very strongly that it was a, an asset to the community. And we were going to try our darndest to bring it to a, a point where we could sustain it. And we um, continue to work on that. I would agree with you. I think it is an asset to the community. Um, is a, a generalized question. I, I'm, I'm just curious about the history of this. I'm surprised that the high school has virtually no weight training facility. They have a, uh, basically a closet. Has there ever been any thought or discussion in the past about taking the fitness center, making it part of the high school, and still allowing adults to use it but pay a fee? In other words, allow kids, in, like right now our students have to pay five bucks every time they use it, isn't that correct? Or they can get a, 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 a year and a half, right. But has there ever, ever been any consideration about making the fitness center actually part of the high school? It hasn't ever come up that I'm aware of. Um, we have tried to incorporate use of the fitness center more with athletic teams, and we have allowed, we allowed them to come in and access the facility at no charge with their coach. Um, but that has not, early on in the fitness center, um, when it was developed, that was taken advantage of frequently. But in the last number of years, it has not. So it, our intention is not to keep high school students out. We just want to make sure that they are properly supervised. I, I would agree with you. I'm, I'm just suggesting for the future that it, it may be worthwhile for a high school our size to actually have a fitness center. So people in gym classes, and I mean, physical education is a very important part of growing up. And we don't have, we have great gyms and great track and great pool, but we have be honest, like honest, kind of a joke of a weight room and no tr no treadmills, no anything in it. This might be something mm -hmm. to consider in the future about working out with us. Yep. That's all I have. Anyone else? I just have one. Is is your fuel budget uh, is it is it locked in at the same? time and rate as the rest of the school department fuel budget and so it's right now targeted at three dollars is that correct that's what we've budgeted is three dollars a gallon 
It's not locked in, but that's what it's not locked in at this time. I, I understand that, but so if 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 we were to be concerned that the cost may be going up, we, we should think about this budget as well as the facility budget in terms of fuel costs. Yes. Okay. When we just to follow up, and when we when we do lock in, we usually do include community services, and the rest of the town does in one contract, don't we? Correct. Okay. Okay. So, any other questions for Jen? Okay. Uh, so the next item is benefits. There is not a tab that would be included. Two, the salary. In the salary. First one. Fluctuations in benefits, particularly when they are headed down, I assume have to do with changes in staffing as much as anything else. Is that, is that correct? Uh, I'll let Pauline answer that, but I think what we do is take our present staff and just project some of the usage for the following year as opposed to trying to anticipate, you know, if we've got five people retiring or what that might do. So we just take our present staff. And, Project carrying all of those folks forward. And right now we're anticipating a 10% increase, but there's, you know, hopefully we'll see less than that. So we might have a little bit of savings there. What does that before. number come in? Usually mid April. The last year we had it early was 1st of March, but I don't, ex usually it's in mid April. I mean, just to give you an idea, I mean, if, if it was 5%, that would, uh, that's big money for us. That would be $80,000. So it's not it would be insignificant. $80,000, right? 5%. Yeah. So it's, instead of what we're projecting at 10%, just to give you an illustration, if you came in at 5%, that means you have $80,000 so that you could reduce the budget or increase the interim superintendent's salary or something like that. How much chance of that? <laughs> Unless. <laughs> Could I? Yes, go ahead. Um, have you checked with, um, actually there's no real good comparison to um, the teacher's self-insured trust because they have a monopoly. Um, do you, have, do you check it all what the increases have been in this state at all in terms of health insurance? How did you come up with 10%? That's what they're requesting for, um, I'm not sure you probably know exactly how the process works, but I know that I do know not this insurance, but another spin-off of Anthem that requests 10%. It's under consideration by the state board. So, uh, I mean, for the your guess is as good as I have project in here. Well, for whatever it's worth, I'll give you my guess is that I would not be surprised to see some. I think 10% is a very reasonable number to put in. They had very low increase the last couple of years because they wanted to compete. And they've been getting their, the monies. When we investigated, when we asked questions, the uh, town uh, insurance committee, um, they were able, they used up their reserves, and they were able to keep their increases low from sources of money we don't know where it came from. Um, the, the belief is those sources of funds aren't there anymore. So we should see a makeup year, which is, I would anticipate being quite large, and I would not be surprised to see somewhere close to 10%, regrettably. And that's why, um, uh, Hopefully some other issues will come to fruition that might give us some, some wiggle room in the future, but I think this year we're going to take it on the chin. So I do not think that's a conservative figure for the public. I think that's a very reasonable figure. Hopefully we'll know the number before you bring the budget to the council. 